So I am on my way to my surgeon's office. I already have my big craniofacial reconstruction surgery tomorrow morning. I have to be at the hospital super early. I'm nervous, um, thinking about a lot of stuff. And I have just some family members asking about like what this surgery is and every aspect of it. So I wanted to just quickly explain um, the different aspects of this surgery and why I'm referring to it as a craniofacial reconstruction surgery because there's so many moving parts to it. Some better videos in the future on this because right now the audio is not good. I'm in the car and I like uh, making pictures and GIFs on videos and stuff. So all in all, this is going to be about a 6.5 to 7 hour operation. And a lot of my friends online refer to this surgery as just TJR, um, total joint replacement for short which is what we consider the main and scariest part of the surgery, but there's a lot more to it. In, in many cases, sometimes it is just the total joint, and that's all the surgery is. Um, so basically form follows function, and a lot of us with ICR, idiopathic condylar reabsorption, our skulls actually grow downwards um, so our bite can function. So this is kind of typical also to skull development of children who are mouth breathers. So this, in my opinion, is one of the most complex surgeries in the world, which is why many go to out-of-network doctors who perform many of these surgeries per year, and they have a big patient base that they can talk to and feel confident about the surgeon and the surgeries. There's a lot that can go wrong with these surgeries, and that's the main reason I've tried to avoid this surgery at all costs for so long, which now I kind of regret, but we'll see. I'll, I'll let you know after I get the surgery if I'm happy with it or not. Um, so in my first video, I'll explain the first part of the surgery, the total joint replacement. Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. So this is what happens to the best of my knowledge, research and talks with different surgeons, but I could have gotten something t wrong. So with that said, in the first part of my facial reconstruction, my rock star of a surgeon will make incisions along the folds of my ears right there, so you won't be able to really see it, um, in the same area where my first jaw surgeon cut into for my first jaw surgery, which was a fat graft. And then he'll make another incision along my neck here and here. And so he has to be careful during this part because of two vital things. There's a major artery that runs up along here and a major nerve branch. And it's kind of like the trunks of these nerves and arteries, which then branch out to the rest of your face. So if you mess up that, then it's going to mess up other areas where it branches off. Um, so it's kind of dangerous and it's just like all over the mandible where he's needing to make his cuts. So to avoid nicking the nerve, he actually uses an electrostim device that stimulates the nerve. So he does something, and then if my eyebrow like starts moving during surgery, he knows he's too close to the nerve, and he backs off. Um, and so next, he is going to cut out what is left of my condyle, which after 20 years with ICR isn't a ton. Um, he removes ligaments that connect to my fat graft disc. If you have a normal disc, you still have those, you have those ligaments, as well as parts of the maxilla fossa, which is like the uh, socket that the condyle normally sits into. And then the lateral pterygoid muscle is removed. That's a part that attaches to your mandible on both sides. That atrophies, sadly, there's no way to attach it to the metal prosthesis that I'll be getting. Then he places in the prosthesis on both sides. He's screwing the plastic fossa into my skull on both sides using bone putty and then screwing the titanium metal part into my mandible, which will extend here. And this whole mandible is just gonna go whoop and like counter rotate. So I won't even look like me after this surgery, which I'm kind of nervous about. And to even get that prosthesis in, he has to cut the masseter muscle, which comes here and here just cuts that and folds it up and then he's able to screw in those pieces and um, watch out for nerves also that's in the mandible. The company that makes these joints actually when you do your scan two weeks before the surgery they scan to see where that nerve is and they put the screw holes in that metal away from the nerve which is really cool. So when the joints are finally placed in there's this other aspect there's a bony part here 
that just shoots up and connects to the temporalis muscles, and that's the coronoid process. So in a lot of cases, this counterclockwise rotation, that coronoid process will bump up against the upper skull. So that will um, need to be cut off and the muscle connection severed, and that's a corundectomy. Um, so that'll occur, and then afterwards he uses a splint, which I got a scan of two weeks ago, and that will be placed in my mouth and will help him to then line up for the next part, which is the Lafort. And I'm getting a one-piece Lafort. Some people get a three-piece Lafort. Some don't need a Lafort at all. So the one-piece Lafort, he'll go in through my mouth up here and go really high up to this point and it actually perforates through the sinuses and then he'll move my piece forward and up slightly so that way when the um, mandible comes out it's able to then connect and you have a really nice bite after that and usually mandible bones are kind of thin in places so he just has to exercise caution during that part as well during that cut and for me, this one piece Lafort is undoing the two prior times I've had my anatomy changed by orthodontists and also just naturally my body following form following function. There will also be a bone graft somewhere in there. And then over the weeks, my natural bone and my body will fill in those spaces and those cavities, which is pretty cool. This part of the surgery takes just an hour or under an hour for the surgeon. This is also part of the surgery that's the hardest to recover from because it literally is cutting into your sinuses. So that's not gonna be fun. Comment below if you wanna hear some weird stories I've heard on this. Also, please check the comments anyways for a disclaimer. So after the surgeon has placed the prosthesis and also done the Lafort, next would come the turbinate reduction. And the third part of my surgery tomorrow will be the turbinate reduction. And this is just a curled kind of bone in your nasal cavities. And sometimes when they do that upper Lafort and move it up, it'll bump up against these bones. So if that happens in your case, the surgeon just reduces them. And that's it. And I'll talk about the genioplasty next. And then the fourth part of my surgery tomorrow will be the genioplasty. And that comes last. And the surgeon goes in again through your lips, just like he does for the Lafort going in. So I'll have no outside incisions. And this is done basically to help have your lips meet again, because people with ICR, our lips aren't able to meet. And so we become mouth breathers and sometimes drool, not all the time, but you can kind of see. Like I have to force my lips to meet. So he kind of judges that and moves it around. It also can help with airway. Um, it helps with tongue space. Um, and there's also a muscle group attached under here. So that pulls that forward. So everything about the surgery tomorrow is just gonna pull everything everywhere. I've heard from patients, like it's so weird to swallow and breathe right after the surgery because it's just like overnight, everything changes. And that's my surgery.